Obtaining rights to a block of IP addresses. By the time you're done here, you will know how to obtain authorization for a block of IP addresses that don't really belong to you. So I was recently digging through some old photos and I came across this one. I thought, ah, perfect. This is actually a picture of me when I got my first new car. That's probably 20 or 21 years old because I know as soon as I got married, that went out the door and in came the family sedan. But it turns out that ownership is a sensitive thing. You can't just walk onto the lot and grab a car that doesn't really belong to you and drive away with it. Likewise, when you buy a car, it becomes your responsibility. You now own all the good and the bad that happens to that vehicle. Matter of fact, that was a Cadillac Catera. They only made them for a couple years because they found out there was so many problems with them. It was just a bad design. And where did that leave me? I own it. <laughs> Every problem, Every issue is my responsibility to solve. And it's the same way when it comes to IP addresses. When they created BGP, they really had to think hard because you're really managing a trusted, untrusted system. Meaning when you, when you think about a routing protocol, most people think about things like OSPF, RIP, or EIGRP. Those are the interior routing protocols where routers form neighbor relationships and exchange routes all over the place. It's a fully trusted system because it's all internal routers. It's all your routers. So you don't have to worry at least as much about somebody coming in and advertising bad information. Well, in the BGP world, you do. Now I mentioned in another video that this block of IP addresses came to us from level three. It was actually CenturyLink before they came level three. And I'm now wanting to advertise that out to Cogent, out to IOBlend and say, I own those. Well, just like the car that I purchased, I have to have some supporting documentation to prove it. If somebody thinks I'm stealing a car, I have to be able to say, no, 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 this is, this is my car. Let me show that I have a proof of registration. I have the authority to use this car. You see where I'm going with this. When it comes to Aaron, the American Registry for Internet Numbers, or RIPE, or Afrinet, or whatever authority you're using in your neck of the woods, their whole purpose is to allocate or assign blocks of IP addresses. Believe it or not, they use those words differently on their website. An allocation is one that they give to an organization that will reassign either that entire block or portions of that block to other organizations. So for example, this could be level three that they give a class B block of addresses to, and level three carves those up into smaller subnets and reassigns it to its customers. Now the ability to do this, at least in the IPv4 world, is virtually gone because we're out of IP addresses in the IPv4 space. The only way customers like you and I can get blocks of IP addresses is through reassignments from these organizations. And just like the car has a proof of registration, there are three ways that they can really prove that you are authorized to use those IP addresses. Because in the system of managing untrust, Every carrier will put filters in place to ensure that you don't advertise networks that don't belong to you. You'll have to use one of these three methods to prove that it does. The first way that you can is through a direct allocation from Aaron, and this can be verified via the Whois record. Now, if you've been in the industry for a while, most people think of Whois records as they relate to domain names. Like cbtnuggets.com is owned by who? You can go to the internet, type in who is cbtnuggets.com, and it will show the records of authority and so on and so forth. But who is is more than just domain names. It can also show you information for IP blocks and autonomous system numbers. You can look up all of those things. So check this out. I'm going to head over to Aaron.net, and right up top, I have a search who is database. I'm going to type in the network that we're using 63 232 144 24. Hit the search button and boom, you can see that we have multiple Whois records. The first one is a slightly bigger than class B block. I can click on that and find out that this slash 14 block was allocated to CenturyLink. And you can see all the information about that assignment. Go back and I can look at, oh, there's a reassignment record. So it actually pulls not only the network I was looking for, but also some of the parent records. If I click on this one, I can see that the parent is CenturyLink and Quest. Those were all the same company. We're just acquisition heaven. But look at the type of assignment. It was actually reassigned from Autonomous System 209 to us. Before my organization was called VIA, it was called Schooldesk. 
That's because our primary focus, our primary customer base is schools, education. We don't actually sell school desks. That's why we changed the name. <laughs> and you can see that this reassignment came to us back in 2014. And the fun part, they even have RESTful links so other web services can embed this stuff in their websites. Now keep in mind, when you do these kind of things, all this information is public. I just went to the RESTful web service and you can see that down here, it shows School Desk, it shows the address that we have on file, which is actually the address of our data center. And it shows the point of contact on there. What's me? All of that is known as the shared who is record. So the who is information is when Aaron allocates it to you. Like we saw that with CenturyLink at the big block level, but it became pretty cumbersome to design ways like this one down here, which I'll talk about in a second, to show that other organizations have authority. So Aaron now supports the shared who is record where they can reflect reassignments like this right here, right in the who is record. That way Cogent or IO or whoever wants to verify that we are allowed to advertise this can look up the shared who is record and say, oh, I see your block was reassigned. Bada bing, we're done. Now I will tell you, not all organizations accept the shared who is record. When I was setting up BGP originally, Cogent took it just fine. My dear friends at IO Data rejected me. They said a shared who is record is not enough. We need a letter of authorization or an LOA from level three. And that's where you have to go to the carrier and get something that looks like this. Now I'm showing you a small version because I want to cut off some of the sensitive information that's in here, but this is an LOA that was given to us by CenturyLink in order for us to advertise that network out to the rest of the world. And now notice the language that they use in this LOA. They're saying, hey, it's fine for school desk or via to advertise this out so long as the prefixes continue to be routed on the CenturyLink autonomous system 209 network, meaning it says we're borrowing. It's like we're leasing the car, that block of addresses. We can't try and steal that away from CenturyLink just because we're waving an LOA in the air. As soon as we stop paying CenturyLink, our ability to use that block of IP addresses goes away. So you now know the process that you'll have to go through to obtain authorization for a block of IP addresses that don't really belong to you.